As the battle between Westminster and the Scottish Parliament continues to escalate over the gender bill, Nicola Sturgeon has announced that she is willing to spend hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' money to fight against the Constitution. This is the true definition of a shameless, a shameless political leader that is Nicola Sturgeon and her SNP minions. So Westminster decided to use the Parliament, decided to use uh, the mechanism that was already in the Scotland Act uh, in 1988. And uh, they, they, they said, well, this, this you guys wrote it, you guys signed it, the Scottish Labour Party, the SNP. It said any legislation um, imposed onto the Scottish people by the Scottish Parliament or the SNP government, if it affects the whole of the kingdom, then the constitution has to be prioritized. Now, Nicola Sturgeon is not happy about this. She doesn't like the rule of law or constitution. So she's now willing, she's vowed to spend hundreds of thousands in taxpayers' money fighting Rishi Sunak's government and Westminster Parliament over her gender bill, her new pet project that is going to be completely be destructive, not just in Scotland for Scottish people, but across the UK because it affects the Equalities Act that belongs to the whole of the kingdom. It matters. You cannot undermine the constitution. You cannot undermine legislation that was supposed to be built for the whole country. Now, devolution is devolution. You know, it's not. It's, it's one of the most idiotic projects of uh, Tony Blair. Uh, they were promised actual decentralization of powers from Westminster, but in reality, they simply created another secondary centralized machine in Holyrood, for example. It doesn't really work. You need to actually decentralize powers. You cannot create a, a secondary Westminster-style establishment. We already have a circus in Westminster. We don't need another one. Now, going to uh, this issue, uh, Lord Hope uh, of Craighead has said that Nicola Sturgeon's chances of winning this case are very low. So the whole thing is going to go to the court and, you know, she's going to take it up to the, the, to the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal and everything's going to be needed if she thinks that it's needed. She's going to do it. And again, we're not legal experts, not all of us, but uh, they're basic things that I've read when it comes to the legislation and uh, connecting it to the Equalities Act and the Scotland Act, obviously, it kind of shows that, yeah, she's not going to be able to win. And she knows that. But she's simply going to be using this as a perfect opportunity to go to the people of the SNP, the, the ones who want uh, the Scottish independence, to say, see, I want to do something for you, the people of Scotland, but England are stopping me. That's basically going to be narrative. This is exactly what she wanted. This is perfectly going with her narrative. Now, Nicola Sturgeon and her obsession with rainbow unicorns, uh, speaking at a press conference, she intends to hold a confidence in the position of the Scottish government and insisted that other senior legal figures think that she will win the court <laughs> in, in the court. She said, but even if that wasn't the case, I do think that there is a national public interest in having some lines drawn that tell us what the limitations of Section 35 are in terms of interpretation of statutes, uh, the that can only come from the court. Or, or Nicola, you could use your own uh, governmental legal advisors to tell you because it's not really rocket science. It, it simply says any any legislation that affects the whole of the United Kingdom, and um, they can be overridden. I mean, I think a seven-year-old can actually translate that. <laughs> it's not really that difficult to understand. You can only do domestic policies that can only affect Scotland. Simple. It's not rocket science. Anyway, uh, she's going to need more money and she's going to take it from the British taxpayers, the English, the Welsh, Scottish and people in Northern Ireland. That's going to be the case. Who's going to kick off? We don't know. We're just going to sit here and complain clearly. Uh, but I think there, there has to be some sort of movement to fight against uh, the sort of uh, power grabbing nonsense that happens in British politics. Let me know what you think. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.